Petit Raju from uh, uh, from Payshire, uh, and he will be able to tell us a little bit about smarter payments, how to improve efficiency control and customer experience in the insurance uh, industry with APIs. You know, uh, you know the uh, actually when uh, when you when you have a, an insurance and actually you need to be uh, paid back, uh, how can you be sure this money is is really used the way it should be? Uh, right, and so we will see how APIs can can help that. So uh, let's wait for Snehith to uh, uh, to join us. Uh, if you if you yeah, okay. Yeah, so, today. Um, I've got my colleague Anthony joining me as well. Yeah, perfect. Uh, that's uh, that's even better. Uh, twice for uh, <laughs> for the same uh, presentation. Two for the price so, of one. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I invite you to share your screen. Hello, Anthony. I invite you to share your screen so we can start. Uh, uh, yeah, for twenty-five minutes. Thank you. So just Great. yeah, you can share your screen. It's the third button. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, cool. So, well, thank you very much, uh, Mehdi, and uh, to API Day for inviting us to talk, and also for all of you for attending to uh, listen to us. Um, thank you also to Florian. Uh, I completely agree with everything that you said. Um, so. I mean, the, the aim of our next 20 minutes is really to give you some insights into the insurance industry uh, and its transformation. And it's very much, though it's a personal view, um, I should state, obviously, <laughs> um, both Sneth and I uh, had quite significant roles within the industry, uh, working for one of the major uh, global insurers, um, but also for the last three years of actually working as, a, as an insure tech. Um, supporting uh, many of those players as well. Um, so I should also introduce Payshaw. Um, essentially, we are an API business uh, that focuses on enabling insurers to become insurtechs themselves. Um, it was founded by Snare and myself. Um, between us, we have 25 years in the industry itself uh, uh, and also 10 years in retail banking as a consultant. Um, so our roles span from transformation and implementation leads through to uh, CEO and board member of some of Axis entities across uh, Europe, Middle East, and Asia. Um, and really, the, that career uh, was the motivation for the creation of Payshore. Um, in 2011, uh, we were attempting to solve some of the complexity of, of the industry and the fragmentation of operations and processes. Uh, and as a result, uh, we, we decided to go it alone and actually help the industry move forwards. Now, as you'll see on the slide, um, we've kind of listed three main areas. And the reason why we're trying to show you what the challenges are, we will come on to APIs and how, how we use them, how we've seen them be used. Um, you've got to understand why there's an opportunity. And it really is a very significant opportunity in this space, as, as Florian um, also mentioned. The first one, and it's it's trust, right? So we as consumers, and we can talk commercial and business as well, but, but there is this trust element. And for me, when I buy insurance, it is actually a grudge purchase. I don't, I don't necessarily feel as though I've got value. I know I have to have it to, to protect my assets or drive my car, but it's something that, that is, is there. So already it's something that doesn't feel natural. Um, additionally, customers have um, anxiety uh, when claiming, and a lot of that is down to complexity of wordings, uh, which obviously are there for certain reasons. You know, um, you know, having excesses and deductibles are very important to controlling claim costs and other aspects uh, like fraud within within policies. But if you think about the process, the control remains with the insurer to actually decide whether you, as the claimant, are going to get paid or not, and. You know, much of this comes from what I would say are legacy approaches and, uh, and, and as a result, result in that journey that is, is not so great. So, so that's the first one, the trust side. Um, secondly, we call anticipation. And this is very much around the fact that um, uh, if, if you think about insurance, the way insurance is priced, it is typically backward looking. You look at experience, past experience. Right, so there are more modern ways in which APIs can be used to bring in additional data to then help focus on pricing and proposition and other, other ways in which you can, can work. But much of the mindset is traditionally around backward looking influences. Now, if you then think about transformation and change, 
one of the biggest challenges is if you change one of the elements of process or the approach of the customer or the product, the first thing you're going to question is whether that's going to change the, the risk of that policy and therefore the profitability. Um, and all of this just creates a situation by which it's very hard for insurers to be able to take leapfrog steps into the future. So the last one is really around efficiency. Um, it's a highly complex industry. Um, and this really leaves open you know, opportunities for obviously new entrants, um, but also businesses to support uh, existing very significant insurers to be able to um, work better. So it's a fragmented industry, uh, fundamentally. If you think through the chain, you have reinsurers at one end that uh, essentially you know, provide capacity to insurers. Insurers themselves, although they'll do some reinsurance, they'll take part of that risk as well. And then from there forwards, insurers will either have all of the value chain or part of it. You know, if they're selling direct to customer through online, they'll be taking many, many different roles. You can have in distribution elements, you've got brokers, tied agents, uh, you can have MGAs, which also do operational aspects and some claims controls. You have TPAs, you know, specialists who either help on international insurance or customer aspects or other elements. So you've got this incredibly complex pot by which when you think about historical platforms and how they work, it means that they're highly complex. And in many cases, uh, certainly in, in a couple of insurers I've consulted for and, and worked for, I've, I've seen black and green screens as, you know, as recently as five years ago. Um, so, so it is pretty archaic in, in many respects, obviously not all of it. Um, the, the other one is the compliance and regulatory landscape has moved forward significantly. If you think about the impacts of GDPR uh, and how, how insurers you know, have to deal with the complexity around regulation, much of the focus now is not only getting compliance as high and as, as, as positive as possible, it's also about how corporates are simplifying their, their own corporate structure um, to make that side of the business or the administration around the business much more efficient. Um, so you can see that there are many challenges that enable insurers not necess necessarily be able to move forwards. Now on the next slide, um, what I try to do, then do is show that you know, even though they're facing this internally, one of the major points is that within that marketplace, and Florian spoke very well to this, there is a lot of change. Um, not only do customers, and this is consumers specifically, but businesses as well, they expect convenience and control, right? I mean, very much, much of our capabilities have been put in our hands. So look at how Netflix works or Amazon works or Uber, you know, Airbnb. It's very much in a, in a different generation to that where insurance is. And at the same time, you've also got new challenges emerging. Now, some of these are obviously US like Lemonade and Trove, but, you know, and Oscar. You've, you've got, you've got this, this pot where you've got emerging customer, uh, emerging challenges. So, it's a very tense time for insurers to be able to try and think about how they move from their past and get over their legacy challenges, but then also, you know, meet the new market. I'll hand over to Sneth, uh, our CEO and co-founder. Thanks, Anthony. Um, I, th I think you've, you've set the scene really that um, insurers are, are facing a number of threats, both internal and external really. Um, but how are we actually seeing insurers embrace these, these possibilities that um, APIs offer? I mean, Florian went through uh, a number of examples in the last talk. And from our personal experience, well, we're starting to see a change. Um, insurers clearly have the ambition to innovate. But I think this legacy that Anthony was describing um, is, is hampering them. So it's, we're not just talking about legacy systems, but I think also legacy processes themselves. Um, and I think in the case of digital transformation, which is a word that, or a phrase that's often used by, by insurers, it hasn't necessarily helped address these issues because all that's happened is um, legacy processes have simply been given a digital veneer. So I, I saw quite a good example of this recently um, with a brand new app being delivered. Um, now this app only worked for a single product that was provided by that particular insurer. Um, and what's worse is that the submit claim button simply takes the customer to the main website. And, you know, it's, it's not even a responsive design. So 
I'd summarize by saying, yes, there's recognition and desire to change for sure. But I think we in the ecosystem at large actually need to be the ones to help the industry to move forward. Um, APIs provide the ideal way to do this in our view, because they provide a, a secure real-time way to access data that traditionally has been siloed. Um, and yes, I think most of the, the success that we've seen has been in the distribution arena, particularly. Um, but we're seeing um, significant pent up demand on the claim side um, as well. So claims, um, I don't think they're fun for anyone really. Um, but I'm sure many of you watching would have made an insurance claim at some point. Um, but I'm generalizing, but it's often a pretty slow experience at best. And I think at its worst, it can actually be genuinely frustrating. Um, the insurers, aren't trusted um, as bodies. Um, you know, people often cite um, banks as being the poster child of um, uh, the industry that's least trusted, but I hate to break it to you insurers, but uh, sadly it's worse. Um, only 29% of customers trust their insurer. Um, Accenture did some work on this a couple of years ago, and this is versus 40% for banks. So really, they've got a long way to go before um, uh, they can um, ad address the needs that are actually emerging from today's customers. So uh, let's take a health insurance claim as an example. So in reality, um, it's assessed up to three times. So first, um, at the point of notification, um, when a, a customer first informs their insurer that they, they have a problem, Again, at the point of service, so in this example, when, when they're getting some treatment. Um, and for a third time, actually at the point of payment, um, before the claim payment is actually released. And this is because of the, the disconnects in how data is shared um, within the business and also the silos in which the teams operate. So this is often um, the case because insurers um, actually outsource key aspects to third parties. Um, now, Florian was talking about how third-party claims administrators um, used to play a, a major role. Um, and indeed, um, insurers have relied on them to perform key parts of the value chain simply because of the complexity involved in the processes. Um, but in reality, insurers don't want to do that. Um, they are risk managers at heart, and they're looking for certainty and control. And I think this is where APIs can actually really make a, a massive difference to the way that um, insurers approach claims handling. Um, they can replace this all or nothing approach um, to data sharing, which, which has sort of happened in the past. I think for insurers, outsourcing is actually a, a genuinely scary prospect, um, but now they can actually begin to address um, some of these challenges um, and manage claims processes um, more efficiently internally um, via API-enabled empowerment. So um, at Payshore, what we are doing is to help insurers improve their claims processes by introducing the ability to control the payments themselves. So what I mean is um, by that, instead of simply um, making a payment at the end of a claims assessment process, you actually control the payment in terms of where, when, and how it can be spent, which gives the insurer additional control actually at that point of, of difficulty for the customer. I think a, a good way of looking at this or a good analogy is um, expenses. So back when I started um, uh, at work, um, expenses used to be paper-based. Um, so you had to stuff receipts in an envelope, um, you had to send them off to a, a finance ops center, and then someone would actually manually go through these receipts and process them, um, type all the data in from a form that you might have filled in. And that kind of gradually evolved to digital receipt capture. Um, you'd take a photograph or you'd scan your receipt, but you'd still be typing things in manually into, into a website. And if you look at the, the most recent expenses platforms, now they actually use APIs that share transaction data live, um, that actually allow the whole submission of the expense step to be skipped because the, the company that's um, providing the expenses card is able to see the transaction as it happened. 
So this is the type of technology that we're, we're embracing here at Paysure. We have um, a direct integration into the Visa network um, enabled by our partner RailsBank. I think um, some of you may have heard Nigel speak um, earlier in the day. Um, and, and this really has been invaluable because what it allows us to do is actually watch a transaction as it happens and then help the insurer control the payment um, and ensure it goes into the right place. So we have a, a simple use case here of how it could work for a physiotherapy claim payment. So an insurance customer may have uh, a patient enabled card. Um, so a virtual or a physical card, which um, uh, the insurer would issue them. And at the point when they need physiotherapy, they simply pay with their card. And what our platform does is uses APIs, one, to monitor, uh, monitor the transaction itself, and two, to actually look at a whole host of external data, um, both uh, insurance rules, uh, what the benefit availability is, um, what deductibles might be in place, um, contextual information. So, you know, where is the customer? Um, you know, what state are the rest of their claims in? So all of this information can actually be brought in in real time through the use of APIs, um, which is simply that something simply that wouldn't have been possible before. Um, and all of this happens in just the blink of an eye, which is, which is the beauty of, of this type of um, uh, way of working. And the payment is released to the provider then and there. The claim is also filed. So in this example, a customer hasn't even had to submit a claim. Um, the simple action of paying for the claim is actually what creates the claim in the first place. And we've seen you know, numerous examples in our work with insurers of, of how you're able to leverage this type of technology. So um, another insurer we're working with is trying to eliminate um, uh, reimbursements for dental claims entirely. Um, we're working with a, a Lloyd syndicate to actually help them identify their hardest hit customers in the event of um, a major storm. So obviously, storms are a major peril in, in parts of Europe and um, coastal United States. Um, here, where, where an event happens, insurers could simply issue um, customers with a control payment card um, that allows them to provide hotel accommodation or emergency food um, and things like that. So I think that the possibilities here are actually very, very broad. So maybe I could just end before we jump into Q&A with a few lessons learned from working with insurers. Um, I think number one, you need to expect legacy and complexity when, when working with insurers. Um, it, it is a given. Um, Anthony wasn't exaggerating when he talks about green screen systems. I think some of you will remember the IBM AS400 systems from, from the 80s. They still are in use today. Um, one insurer that, that we've worked with quite recently actually has three of them. Um, and, you know, it's, there is no business case to change these in many cases because they, they simply don't fall over. Um, complexity is another one. Um, many businesses, certainly that we've worked with, have actually grown through acquisition. So businesses are far more complex than you can possibly imagine. Um, so I think flexibility is the key. Um, you know, within Payshore, our, our core API set is actually built using GraphQL. Um, now, we did this because it provided us with the best way to um, expose all of our functionality in our demonstrator apps. But ultimately, when we work with our insurance partners, we bespoke um, a REST API for each insurer. Why? Uh, may sound crazy. You know, why not use standard APIs? The reality is that each insurer has um, its own processes. Um, they have their own requirements. Um, so I think flexibility is, is critical. And I think, you know, the next point, which is working in partnership is, is absolutely key to that. I think you need to work with um, your insurers in order to um, get something that's truly sustainable. Um, I think the, the next point to maybe make is insurers generally expect proof of concept. Um, they are risk averse. They are in the business of um, managing risk. MVPs simply aren't good enough. Um, they want to see a, a ready commercialized product um, rather than um, just an MVP. So it's about proving the concept, yes, within a contained environment, within a particular sector of business or uh, a, a particular um, group of customers. But 
it needs to go beyond MVP. And I think the last one, just to hammer again, is uh, compliance. Um, you know, you won't get anywhere um, unless you have a good understanding of the the compliance needs that um, an insurer faces. Um, it was literally the only thing that kept me up at night when um, I used to be uh, in an insurer uh, working on the business transformation side. It is normal for for half of an IT manager's agenda um, for a given year to be dominated by compliance matters. So um, I, th I think it's absolutely critical um, when working with them um, to remember that. So thank you very much for listening. Um, if you are interested in anything you've heard, I mean, please do feel free to, to contact us. Um, the email address is on the screen. Um, and we're happy to take any questions that you may have. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Snehid and Anthony. Uh, we have two minutes for questions. The first question I would ask is, uh, First, it's great to see that APIs can connect, you know, the, the insurers and actually the company who will do the repair or do the stuff. So we know that the real transaction happened and the real repair has been made. Uh, so, yeah, that's the beauty of connecting IT systems together. Uh, yeah. And we understand also here that it may reduce the cost of the, the, the premium of the insurers or if, if the insurers knows exactly the risk and that the right price of the risk, right? So that that's a good part. But on the other part, um, uh, like uh, we can see also some, let's say, uh, um, let's say for the user, the benefits can be a little bit different because he may not be able to go everywhere he needs. You know, he he will be able to go only where there is current API integrations. So until and like uh, all the mechanics have APIs to connect. With, uh, with the insurers, the, the, the customer will have only a selection of choices. So what's today the discussion you have with the insurers to solve that problem? So that's a really interesting question, Mehdi. And um, it was one that we considered a lot when, when we put together Payshow. So um, our first partnership is actually with, with a global payment network, Visa. Um, and the purpose of this is to actually address exactly the problem that you highlighted. So in many cases, insurers want to offer flexibility to customers beyond um, their own dedicated network or their own negotiated set of providers. And by partnering with a business like Visa, we're actually able to offer them you know, immediate access to the world's largest payment network. So in effect, any business that has a Visa terminal becomes um, part of the insurer's available network. Yeah, so it's not a direct EP integration either to you or the insurer, it's through Visa, right? Precisely. Yeah, uh, that, that's quite smart. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so we are out of time, but uh, we uh, uh, for uh, thank you very much for presenting. For everybody interested uh, about knowing more about uh, uh, Payshare, uh, yeah, um, you can you can reach uh, Snehith and Anthony uh, directly uh, on LinkedIn or through the email they, they just shared with us. Don't hesitate also, uh, Anthony and Snehith, to share uh, some links in the stage right of the of the uh, of the chat. Uh, the chat stage, sorry, uh, to know more about um, uh, about uh, Payshare and how to contact you. Thank you very much for this presentation. It will be uh, recorded and, and also uh, uh, available for replay for other people who could not attend to, to your presentation. You can disconnect now your screen. Good. Right. Great. Thank, you, Thank you very much for having Thank us here.